So how much practice does it take before you as an artist, as a writer or a photographer or a filmmaker, are making art that is distinctively yours? Oh, it's a big question today, man. <laughs> and lovely people of the planet. This is Jeffo. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. I'm just a dude on a bicycle trying to work through how, I'm, how I might evolve as a filmmaker, as a writer, poet, and as a human being. Thank you so much for being here with me this morning. So I was talking with a friend last night. I've been thinking about this for a few days, actually, about how much practice does it take to become good at something but really, how much practice does it take before you are making a thing that is distinctly yours? And there are two things here. Part of this is, what are your intentions? And we talk a lot about this in graduate school and poetry school. Poetry school. <laughs> Never called it that. We talked a lot about this in graduate school, about what are the intentions of the the author, the poet, when making a poem and how much does that define? What kind of poem? Is it a poem? Because today, you know, if you write a sonnet, it has a particular form and you can say, yeah, I wrote 14 lines of iambic pentameter and it kind of turns here and it kind of turns here. And so that's basically a sonnet. But that doesn't say whether the poem achieves any kind of distinction as a particular artist or not. Uh, we got the surfers out there this morning on the wave. I think that the second half of the Whitewater Park opened up this weekend, so we didn't get out to that. Hey, good morning. We didn't get out to it, but I imagine that was a lot of fun. A lot of people enjoy it. Surfing, boating, it looks kind of fun. Maybe in my next life. I just got too many other things going on that are really great. and I don't need another, another great thing. Especially need another expensive thing. Hey, good morning, how's it going? So I've been thinking about this. How long does it take? Because I was taking photos this weekend. And I, hey, good morning. And I happened to look down, so I bought this uh, Canon 80D back in the end of February, early March 2017. So I've been, had this camera for almost two and a half years. Before that, I had this great little Canon T3i that someone else is making fantastic use of. Molly is getting great photos out of that thing. I was not able to. Part of that was where I was as an artist, and part of it was I really bought that camera for video and that was my full approach to it and uh, I never really wrangled out the photography side of that camera which Molly is obviously showing us that it works really well. <laughs> so thank you for demonstrating that for us Molly, your practice. So that's kind of what has been on my mind because I come in and out, we were gone for a weekend and that throws me off my schedule, and I know I've whined about this a lot, so I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I know, it's still my life. I need to get up in the mornings and write, because that's what makes me feel connected. So, writing is a thing that came very naturally to me. So, writing poetry was pretty easy in, this, in a sense of me being able to pretty quickly come into making poems that were distinctly not other that were that and and like in the last few years distinctly mine whoa what was that must have been a motorcycle upstairs upstairs <laughs> up on fairview that's what upstairs is now on the other hand with photography it's completely different i am uh, i have struggled struggled it has been very difficult for me Whoop. Got the saddlebags. 
saddlebags on the other side of the bike. I was uh, shifting my weight for one direction and it was the other. So it goes. So with photography though, I had to learn how to literally see the world differently. I knew nothing about photography three years ago. Like literally, I mean, I knew basic, like very basic composition. I knew like the rule of thirds, which is, you know, that grid on your phone when you're taking a photo. Just line up the people's eyes like on that top line and you'll make a better portrait. Yeah, that's free. <laughs> Actually, you probably already know that. You're probably already doing that. But even that simple composition rule took me a long time to figure out. Uh-oh, we got some action going on up here with the police. I wonder what's happening. Oh well, hope everything's okay. So with poetry, it happened pretty quickly. With photography, I was out taking photos this weekend, I said, and I was checking my numbers. Since I got that ATD camera, photos and videos combined, I have taken 29,349 photos and videos with that camera in like two and a half years. And you know what? Some of them are starting to be decent. So there's no, basically I'm, I was trying to get at, you know, is there, you know, we hear about the 10,000 hour rule and it takes 10,000 hours to become expert at something. Now, expert in art, is that the same thing as expert in craft? Because to be able to become really good at something as a craftsperson is very different than becoming very good at something as an artist. Craftspeople are able to rely on their craft to do a particular kind of thing over and over, but can they do it distinctly? I was re-watching this great video by Chantelle Martin this weekend. She's an, uh, I guess an illustrator. She says, all she says is, I like to draw, so maybe she's a drawer. <laughs> um, but she's really fantastic. She does these great black and white illustrations, basically big magic marker against white generally. And they're really compelling, I love it. And the reason they're compelling is because she spent time practicing how to make a line that is, that is distinctly hers. So when you see, or when I see Chantel Martin's work, it's like, oh, that's Chantel Martin. And it generally is. Um, it's something post Keith Haring, and it gets into like some kind of anime stuff. I don't know how to describe it. I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description on my website. I don't think those come through on iTunes, but uh, so go out to the website, the morningridepodcast.com, and you can check out all kind of the extra stuff there because I don't think that stuff comes into iTunes or wherever else you may be listening. I found that a lot of people have uh, picked up the RSS on this, which is kind of cool. It kind of diffuses the listenability, I imagine, but whatever. So with writing, it didn't take me much time at all, but with photography, because it was a new way of interfacing with the world. It was a new way of literally looking at the world, of seeing the world. I never saw the world for as object. I always saw the world as avatar or, um, you know, symbol. You know, a table wasn't a table. A table had a story behind it. There was someone that bought that table for a reason. There's someone that uses that table for a reason. So the fact that there were these vertical and horizontal lines that intersect and you could put things on it. That wasn't a thing for me. I didn't, it was the story behind it when I saw a table. And so I wasn't looking closely at how the lines worked. So I had to learn how to look at a table for its shape, for the way that the light falls on it. Um, compositionally, light-wise, man, I worked hard. I'm into reflections a whole lot. I like that. I like a photo of a thing that isn't the thing, but that reflects the thing somehow. Glass does that particularly well. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kind of asking this question, I guess, of you guys. What is a thing that is worth your time? Like, if you want to be a writer, how much are you willing to write? How many poems are you willing to write 
that never, that no one ever sees, that they're just in your notebook. And do you finish them? I was listening to this Jason Isbell interview with George Saunders. Jason Isbell is a folk country kind of uh, musician, amazing songwriter. And uh, George Saunders, of course, the novelist and uh, short story writer. 10th of December, man, I'm working my way through that. So good, so unexpected, just wow, the, everything about it. His prose, the way he puts the sentences together, the way that he puts the sentences together against one another is just fantastic. Highly, highly recommend that if you're looking for a, some uh, a departure from the norm. George Saunders, 10th of December. Anyway, Isbell was talking about how even when he knows that a song is going to be wrong, I'm sorry. See, this is the other thing. I'm trying to get out of this idea that there's right and wrong with all of this. Because my thing is, if I'm getting up in the morning and writing, I'm getting up in the morning and writing, and at that moment, only at those moments, am I a poet. Only at those moments am I a filmmaker or a screenwriter, I guess. Only at those moments that I'm engaged with my craft, engaged hopefully with an art, can I consider myself to be that thing. So if I'm working at writing every day, I'm a writer. If I'm not working at writing every day, I'm not a writer. If I'm not a writer, then what am I? Just a monkey on a bicycle. <laughs> I know this is all loosely threaded. I knew I wouldn't really have time to get into the depth of how much practice does it take. But here's some things that I have learned is for me, what really worked was like with the writing was to be in a, get in a group of folks. Uh, well, I was in college and so it was easy to just take a writing workshop. So you're required to write poems and bring them into class. In other words, you're required to show your work publicly, kind of regardless of where it stands as far as being distinctly yours or whether it even holds together yet. I don't like the idea of failure, but clearly I have written a lot of poems that no one will ever see because they, they don't hold together. I've taken a lot of bad photos that no one will ever see, hopefully, because the composition's off or the exposure's off. Something doesn't, doesn't bring any extra intelligence to the photo itself. I don't consider any of those failures because they are all along a way. They're all a through line to me becoming a better photographer. They're all part of me becoming a better writer. So with photography, what I decided, gosh, man, it was probably two years ago. I, I, I said, okay, I've got to upload at least twice a week to Instagram. So that made me get out and take photos because I really wanted to commit to evolving as a photographer. I wanted to make images that more people were more attracted to and now I'm finally at that point but what's funny is that I don't know how to make them distinctly mine at this point other than they are the way that I see the world a lot of times but I've also got this design background web design a little bit of print design I would not say I'm a print designer but with web design you know how do you look at the world so that people interact with it in particular ways that are hopefully uh, pleasurable and bring them into your content, into your ideas. Wow, that's loud. Uh, we got, let's cut through here, because that, that looks busy over there. So anyway, I have found, I have to practice every day, and if I can find a venue that I feel is safe for me to put my work my evolutionary work out there that I get feedback plus it just helps me stay committed to the thing. One of the other things that Chantel Martin talks about that I think is really important for artists or crafts folks, creative professionals, is that we have to make and share and make and share and make and share. And the more we make and the more we share, the more we refine our work, the more that our work becomes distinctly ours and the more that I think we enjoy it. And the more that we know when we're on to something, when we're not on to something, and <laughs> under best case scenario, when maybe we're evolving into the next 
idea of ourself, the next version of what we do as an artist. So that's kind of my experience. What are your experiences? How does all that work for you? Oh my gosh, I thought that woman was my old boss at the library. Clearly not. So how does that work for you in your creative endeavors? Now the other thing is like, you know, I make furniture too every once in a while, like when we need a table and we've just torn down someone's garage and they said, yes, you can use all of our lumber. <laughs> Thanks guys, <laughs> we have a table now. And so what I do is I find designs that I feel like I can accomplish generally, but I'm not trying to be a fine woodworker. I mean, I enjoy it a whole lot. But with that, it's just about, can I make a thing that, that looks like a thing and is functional and isn't terribly ugly? <laughs> so that's another kind of thing is that I just enjoy being creative in general. Same thing with building uh, cigar box guitars. It's a lot of fun. They're uh, crude and primitive little instruments that mostly stay in tune, but I enjoy playing them and I enjoy making them. But I don't have any expectations, whereas like with photography and with writing, I have expectations that I'm working toward, uh, you know, really trying to evolve these crafts into art in a way that is distinctly mine. Man, does any of this making sense? Does any of this resonate with you at all? <laughs> What are your practices? What are the ways that you find that you can stay connected to your art? Hey folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. And maybe your bicycle is riding, or maybe it's photography, or maybe it's an actual bicycle. That's kind of fun too, isn't it? Especially this time of year in the summer. It's so nice to just hop on a bike with a t-shirt and jeans and just go. Whatever your bike, I hope that you have a chance to be on your ride today. Thanks for riding with me really makes a difference. I'm grateful we're on this ride together, folks.